So today for our final day of prayer, I'm asking you to pray for our church. We've been praying for a bunch of things. I've been asking you to pray for your neighbors. I've been asking you to pray for our city. I've been asking you to pray in so many ways, uh, particularly even for yourselves. But today I'm asking you to pray for our church and for our church's future. This church is about 14 and a half years old. Back in 2006, Jen and I moved to town to get this church started. And an interesting fact from 2006 is that when we moved to town, there were 12 churches that were getting started at the same time as we were. We were one of those 12. Today, only three and a half of those churches are still around. I say three and a half because one of those churches is now a satellite campus of a church down in Indianapolis. But nonetheless, for 12 churches to be whittled down to just basically three, that's standard practice. It's very rare for churches to survive past their second birthday, and we've made it past 14. But as I think about that, I am confronted with the reality of the last couple of years and what they've done to our church. Uh, two years ago or so, almost two years ago, we began to get some rumors of the pandemic, but the political scene was starting to boil up. And then through 2020, everything just absolutely exploded. There was the pandemic, there were the lockdowns, there were the mask controversies, and everything became political, whether you wanted it to be or not. And as a result, we've lost a lot of people. This past year when we did our Commitment Sunday, we had about 25 people sign the membership commitment. We had some other people sign the associates commitment. And listen, I am grateful and so absolutely excited about every single person who made that commitment. But since February, we've even lost some of the families that made membership commitments. And so now we're at this place where we're finishing up our 21 days of prayer because we're launching into September, a month where we're kind of going to try to re-envision what it means for us to serve one another and serve our community and hoping for October to be a new launch of the church. But to just be honest with you, we are in many ways back where we started. Uh, 14 years ago, we had a core group of about 12 people. Today, we've got many more than that. We've got at least twice as many who are really committed. Back then, they were all baby Christians. Today, we've got a strong group of people who have a good relationship with God and an eagerness to serve other people. Back then, we were meeting in rented facilities, schools, and wherever else we could find it. Today, we have a fabulous building here on Concord Road. As I think about the differences, I, th I also think about some similarities. The very first month that we launched in 2007 when we launched our first public worship gatherings. In those first four weeks, a family came to our church and on their first Sunday with us, they wrote us a check for $4,000. Now, they only stayed two more weeks. Eventually, they decided they were gonna go back to their previous church, but something about what we were doing inspired them and they wanted to participate and support us. And so they came, they gave some money, and then they left. They were just drops from heaven. God just gave us a blessing right then and there. But as I look at our bank account now, we have about $4,000 in our bank account. That's not enough to cover our mortgage payment for next month. For the past two months, we've been in a cash flow negative situation, and that's without paying my paycheck. And so we're at a place where we have to really do a lot of reevaluating, a lot of reconfiguring, a lot of reimagining. What does it mean for us as a church to kind of in some ways start over, while in other ways we've got such incredible assets? We've got a great group of people, we've got a great facility, but what it makes me think is that you and I need to be giving this over to God. Because going back to 2007, when we first launched, I remember that very first Sunday. I, the night before, was preparing my message and I had printed up about 70 bulletins. That was back when we were doing printed bulletins. And around 1.30 in the morning, Jen came into my office and she was like, how many bulletins did you print up? And I said, about 70. 
And she said, have you no vision? Don't you have any faith? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, the last time we had a gathering, only 30 people showed up. But I prayed and I said, God, maybe you sent Jen in here for a reason. And so I printed up 120 bulletins. And the next morning we ran out. Listen, I don't know what kind of miracles God is going to do in our midst this time. I don't know how many people he's going to bring through our doors in surprising fashion. I don't know how many times someone is going to give us a miraculous gift of money at just the right time for just the right amount. I don't know how many more miracles God is going to do. But what I do know is that he's still in that business. He's still in the business of seeing people's lives changed. He's still in the business of having his message get proclaimed. And listen. I'm still in the business with you of trying to see how many people in Lafayette we can make a difference in their lives. And so I'm asking you to join me. Yes, join me in prayer. Yes, join me in commitment. But let's see what God can do over these next couple of months as we begin to reimagine, re-envision, and restart our entire church thing. Join me in prayer today. Pray for our church. Pray that God would do miracles in our context again. Pray that people would come to this place and they would discover Jesus. Pray that people would be inspired to give towards this ministry. Pray that the message of Jesus gets proclaimed as far and as wide as we can. And pray that through Lafayette Community Church, the city of Lafayette, the city of West Lafayette, the region of Tippecanoe County, can have an expression of faith unlike any of the others. We're not trying to compete with the other churches doing something better than they're doing. We're trying to be authentic to who God is calling us to be. We're trying to be authentic to teach God's word clearly in a way that's relevant to our society today. And we're trying to make a difference in the lives of people who live around us. So I'm glad you're joining me in this. I'm glad you're joining me on this journey. And I'm asking you to pray with me today for the final day of our 21 days that God would do miracles all over again.